um, John's, uh, John the Baptist is baptizing, and he looks up and he sees Jesus coming, and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And the Lord just stopped me, and it's like, all the voices that are hitting us today, every voice that's coming from everywhere, whether it's, you know, there's always turmoil in everybody's home, no matter how great, you know, you are. My house, I've got, I'm outnumbered. Even, I even have a female dog, right? <laughs> and I have all daughters at home. My son is long gone, so there's nobody but me. So I lose every single battle, right? <laughs> and so there's voices at home. There's voices that come to you from social media. There's voices in my business. It's like I walk in there. God just blessed our business back in 09. We were just struggling. And, I, you know, you got to be careful what you ask for, right? And too much is given, much is required. So I asked the Lord to really bless us, and our business is unbelievable. I mean, we're just going crazy all the time. So there's all the voices that come from business, you know, especially retail, especially where you're working with the public all the time, and people are just always, you know, just standing on your head, you know, so to speak, and then you're able to love them and work with them. And, and you know, we get people come in there that are, with, oh my gosh, Nathan Sinead, full-on demon-possessed guys, you know, that come in, and we're working with them, and we treat them all the same. I, I've taught archery to people in fishnet stockings that are guys, and they got fingernails longer than any, anybody's ever seen, and they want to shoot a bow. And we just we just love them. We treat them all professionally. Everything's good. So you got all these voices coming from business in whatever avenue you are in business. And then the Lord just showed me that scripture, and he says, John says everything, the hope of all mankind, in one short sentence. And then the hope of all mankind he takes away the sin of the world. I mean, that's all our hope. That's, that's what we have. That's what we live for. That's every day. That's every day from the day that I first received Christ to when I got the you know, baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I actually knew that God was real. I mean, every day, that's our hope. That's what we live for. And we share that. I mean, it's just, it's just awesome. I mean, every day, you wake up you're joyful. I mean, my, my kids all give me a hard time. So I'm like... You get in my kind of truck. My wife's always got some other music on. And I'm all Christian music. And I always have been. And I'm like, and I change all the radio stations when I drive her truck. She's like, I don't want you messing with my radio because I'm switching it all. And all the buttons just go. It's like all, all the Christian stations or, you know, or, or satellite, you know. It's, so, but that's just, that's just always me. And it's always wake up because that's, that's the only thing to live for. I mean, we're only here for this long. And if we can't share the hope that lies within us or always have an answer for the hope that lies within us for everybody with love, I mean, I don't, what are we doing? I mean, you know, even when I, there was times that I know, and I, I shared this last summer, and I just want to share it again, but, you know, probably about a year and a half, two years, it's probably been two years ago now, the um, Lord really got a hold of me. And, and it was, I was driving home, and Carl Woolley's my neighbor, and I've known Carl for a long time, and, and he'd been suffering from cancer, and you know, one day I'm driving home and, and uh, you know, the Lord just says, you need to stop, you need to stop praying for him. And I'm like, oh man, I'm tired, Lord. And I, it'd just be awkward. And I, I know he's doing better. I saw him driving his truck. He's, he's, he, has a, he had a big logging operation. And I saw Carl driving his truck and I'm like, oh, he's doing better. I heard he was doing better. About four days later, Scott Whiteley calls me and he goes, Carl passed away. The Lord just hit me like a ton of bricks, you know. It's like, oh my gosh. And it's like, yeah. He goes, I needed you to obey. I needed you to stop. I needed you to pray for him. And, you know, and I was so burdened with it for so long, but it was good because it kind of tattooed some stuff on my heart that the Lord wanted me to know for sure. And it, and, and it, and it kind of broke my heart in a way. And, and the Lord's like, and, and I suffered with it for a long time. And, and uh I'm Ron Sowers, stops by the shop, and I kind of, I, I was just still in my broken, I told Ron about it, you know, I kind of gave him the whole thing, I think I just shared with you, and Ron comes back in, and, and he told me, he goes, well, this person, this person, this person, probably exactly when you were supposed to stop, they were there with Carl, and they were praying for him, and the Lord just, like, wanted me there, too, you know, because Carl would have saw me, and he know me, and it's like, you know, hey, there's that redneck bow hunter guy that I've been friends with. He's my neighbor. And yeah, he believes in Christ too. And he's here praying. I needed to do that. And I didn't do it. But, you know, Carl received Christ, you know, and they, you know, Ron was all comforting me on it. It was good to hear that. But at the same time, you know, I, I didn't forget that I was disobedient, you know, and there's no more, you know, no more being that. It's like, you know, life's short. There's no more disobedience. And, I don't know, I've got all these directions. You are going to interview me, but 
<laughs> really didn't do that. Really didn't do like that. Like herd cats up here. Yeah, exactly. That's like all. That's like all my grandkids over here the other day. That's what I told somebody. I was like herd cats. <laughs> I would say. I mean, just. Um, I think it was that divine uh, kind of pivotal moment uh, last summer that there's been just this shift in Wayne that I just really appreciate it, where he's been in personal revival. And when people are in personal revival, like there's, you know, um, just so much happens around it because they're, you, ministry is not what you do, it's who you are. When, you, when you're excited about Christ, when you're excited about what God's doing in you, like ministry just happens around you. You don't have to manufacture it. You know, evangelism is not an event, it's a lifestyle. It's just like you being you. So I grew up in a, in a real moral home, you know. I, I grew up on a row crop farm up in McKenzie. And, and uh, you know, my dad was born in, in, uh, in 1917, so it kind of gives you an idea. He was elderly when I was born, but, you know, hardcore, you know, row crop farmer, you know, native Oregonian. You know, and, and my grandpa actually had started Thurston Christian Church and, and had preached, you know, and was a minister and stuff. And I didn't even know that because my dad wasn't, my dad wasn't real proud of, you know, any kind of, you know, church heritage. In fact, I grew up basically, you know, my father preached against that. And my mom was real sensitive to the Lord. You know, she had a real heart, you know, for God and everything and got saved right after I did. But, you know, probably, you know, just to make a, you know, kind of a Cliff Notes version of, of my testimony, you know, I think I was probably six years old and I came in the house one day and Billy Graham, you know, we had two channels, right? Yep. <laughs> the old rabbit ears and we had two channels, KZI and channel, you know, nine and, and 13 and, and he was on and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, and so it sucked me in at the age of six and I'm sitting there watching and it's like, you know, he kind of gives the altar call, you want to go to heaven and, you know, pray the sinner's prayer. And I remember that when I got saved. And I, I didn't get saved until I was 19, but I remember, yeah, I want to go to heaven. I, I didn't even know there was a way, you know. It, you know, as a, as a kid, when you don't grow up in, like, any kind of church background, you kind of get this idea, like, the only way I'm going to go to heaven is I got to, you know, crawl on grass, blast, and I got to, you know, hum, and I got to wear this stuff, I got to become a monk. And, you know, there's just all this religious stuff you see, and you don't have any knowledge of it because you don't really know the gospel. You don't know the good news. And, you know, so... You know, for me at the age of six, I think the Lord just really saw that and saw, thought, you know what, probably in time, there's going to be a time that there's going to be an opportunity. And so that came at like the age of 18, and I gave my heart and life to Christ. And I, I, I knew, I mean, if you had asked me at that time when, when I really, you know, prayed and received Jesus, if you had said, you know, are you, you know, what, what's going to happen if you die? If somebody would have asked me that, I was like, oh, there's no doubt, I'm, I'm going straight to hell. I mean... There's no opportunity for me. I mean, I really, at that point in my life as a teenager, I had no clue. And, you know, so like receiving the Lord, I remember it was a really dynamic experience because I was full of demons. I mean, obviously, I felt weak. And for the first time, like when I prayed through that Sunday's prayer, for the first time, I felt, I felt clean inside. I mean, just like total cleanness. And it was probably... Six months later, um, I had graduated high school. I was probably working for Rears Manufacturing as a welder um, just out of high school. And, and I remember my dad, it was hot. You know, we had a lot of bush beans. And you have to irrigate bush beans like crazy. So I went down to help him out one weekend. And, and you know, we had a farm in Corvallis. We had a big farm in Corvallis. We went up to McKinsey. And, and so we're moving irrigation pipe. And that night, I remember I thought, you know what? I, I had really not prayed on my own, right? No, no real time, like hit my knees and really being honest with God. So, you know, it was the time to do that, right? So, you know, I hit my knees and just like, Lord, I'm not, I'm not gonna read this Bible and I'm not gonna, you know, go to church and I'm not gonna worship, I have to do all this and give up all this life of sin if I don't have something that's for real. I mean, it was just an honest prayer. I mean, I was just being as honest as I could as just, you know, your typical, you know, teenage red-blooded kid, you know, and I'm just like, and without a doubt, I mean, God picked me up, he took me somewhere, and I didn't even know what was going on. But I, I felt love like I never felt in my life. I felt like I'd had experience like none other. And, you know, I remember stepping outside of this old camper I was staying in and just looking up at the stars and going, oh my gosh, God is real. I mean, for the very first time in my life, I'm looking at the stars and I'm like, there is a real God, and he loves me. He just picked me up for just a split second. You know, however what the time frame was, I have no idea. But, you know, he held me in his arms. And, you know, later on, I probably learned that I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit because there was 
discussions going on and everything in my spirit and everything. And I, I didn't even know what had happened. But I knew I'd been touched. And I, I, for, for probably the next, you know, three or four years, I mean, anybody I ran into, I mean, I told them about the experience and I shared Jesus and everything. And, you know, just the complications of life, you know, I came, became your typical backslid Jack Wagon Christian, so to speak, you know. And, 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 and I kind of want to tie it to Hawaii. Um, so during this whole period of time, you know, marriage, divorce, all that good stuff, you know, and, and uh, I wind up meeting this guy that comes to my shop, and, uh, and his name's Jeff Merle, and he's just like one of these guys that just, he's 13 years old, he's never going to be 14, he's never going to grow up, he's going to be the most immature, fun-loving, kind-hearted guy you ever want to meet. And so he invites me over and I go hunting with him. Well, oh my gosh, I mean, he is, he, he's awesome in every way, but I mean, he's just worldly in every way. And, you know, I wind up having the greatest hunting experience on planet Earth, on Maui with him. And, and, uh, and I was kind of in a, in a really dry place in my life and everything. And so that, you know, we really got kind of connected there, kind of became good friends. Well, he comes over and he hunts with me here. And, uh, and this is probably about three or four years later, so it's probably mid-90s. And you know how you can be a total jack wagon Christian, and the Lord will just say, look, I need you to witness to this guy now. And, um, yeah, well, not really. Yeah, okay. So, you know, just normally, you know, sometimes I argue with God, sometimes I don't. So I'm like, okay, here we go. And, you know, so I share with, you know, with Jeff what had taken place in my life. And he listens to the whole thing. And, you know, he's very rarely ever serious. Most of the time he's, you know, snapping off grass. And you're sitting there trying to glass or you're bugling or something. He's jamming grass in your ear. He's putting the air. You know, he's, he, 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 you fall asleep and he's like filling your pack full of rocks or something. It's just, it's just who he is. I mean, just completely 12 years old all the time, never a break. And then for the first time, and so I'm sharing with him and he like, he's, he's tuned in. And he's listening to everything I said. And I get done, and he looks at me, and he goes, so you're saying that you, you believe in a God that could take somebody like Charles Manson, if you don't know who Charles Manson is, that's, it's okay if you're younger. And he was a very bad man. And he said, you, you could say that your God could forgive him, and he could go to heaven. And I go, absolutely. I mean, if Christ died, we could all be forgiven. I mean, that's the power of the blood of Christ. And and Jeff looks at me and he's like, oh my gosh. And he goes, I could never believe in that. And he started getting angry. And you know, at the time, I just like, I didn't even know how to deal with it. And he got totally angry with me, hunts over, he goes home. And it's probably five years later, I'm sitting in my office one day, and, and it's probably not a good time for my wife and I, you know, financially and everything, you know, and the Lord just says, look, you're going to box up a brand new bow, arrows, everything, you know his draw link, and you taking care of his archery and his archery is like you could be like a suit fitter you know I'm going to know that Joby's got a 28 and a half inch draw in his right hand and blah 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 I know you just know these things right because it's part of your deal and so I know how to fit this guy so I just box his bow up and I send him this brand new bow and, and typical Jeff I think about five days later I get this phone call and it's like what are you doing <laughs> and I'm like so I'm just like dude Life is short. I love you. I go, Lord wanted me to send you that. So I did. So so we became great friends again. I mean, like a three or four year period of not talking and we're friends. So our archery shop is kind of like a ministry. Like, I'll give you an example. We'll go away from this for a second. But, you know, last summer you asked me to share. And, and, and so I kind of shared kind of a vision of what the Lord wanted me to do. And it just had some fantastic things. And, and we'll kind of run into things, you know, I finger a lot on this, but uh, Gary was probably the first one that said, hey, I'm going to pray for you, you know, and, and, and what you're planning on doing. And, uh, and, and it went just fabulous, but I had no idea, you know, that this, you know, who in this church was involved in that prayer. But, you know, one thing that really touched me is, and it was a street ministry, and it was kind of like the Lord just said to me, look, I'm giving you a vision. You know, nobody cares about these people. This is kind of like a Civil War battlefield. I'm going to show you the homeless. And you're going to walk out there, and there's going to be people that are dying, and there's no hope. But there's people that have hope, and there's people that are there. And this is before the violence hit last summer. And I just had some dynamic times, and if we had time, if anybody ever cares, I'll, I'll share with you some of the great things that happened. I mean, there was crazy things that happened. I mean, 
you know, but it was good because you can love those people and you can pray for them. I mean, my son-in-law, he's got this United Hive app, you know, and it connects people on testimonies and Christians, testimonies of what they're doing and stuff. And it gave, you know, one day on social media, it's like, just pray for somebody. Just, just walk up and, and lay your hands on them and just ask them if you can pray for them. Oh my gosh, some of the people there were just at I mean, they saw it. They saw it coming. There's no way they were just completely oblivious, you know. But a lot of people, like, you know, would let me pray for them and, and just, you know, speak love and truth in their life. And it was just great, you know, it was just fantastic. But, you know, last summer, Joby got me up and I shared a little bit what my vision was. And, you know, after I was done, I just looked over and I seen, I seen Nathan Ultimus standing there. And the Lord just says, You need to ask him to go to work for you. And Nate had been kind to me. I mean, the first time I was here, he's like, let's go to lunch. And, you know, we, we meet for lunch. And, and, and who met who met us for lunch? Oh, uh, that was Grant Spees. Yeah. yeah. He's so the leader of Camp Parley. Great time talking and stuff. It was good. It was good fellowship. Something I needed at the time and stuff. And uh, and, and so anyway, you know, I, I'd known Nate from that. So the Lord just said, you know, he needs to go to work for you. And I'll be honest with you, since he went to work a couple Sundays ago, Kellen Morgan, who is like one of my stepkids, I drug him around, he's friends of my son, mm -hmm. I drug him around since he was little, killed a bunch of animals with, you know, with me and everything, bear hunt, deer hunt and everything. Kellen was kind of in a bad place a couple years back, and his father calls me about five years ago and, and uh, says, you know, Kellen's just drinking, he's working at Newman's Fish Fry, you, Wayne, can you ask him to go to work for you? And so I did. And long story short, he wound up, you know, he's worked for me for like five years. And I've shared with Kellen, but he's always like, oh, I'm a good guy. I'm good enough. And then Nate goes to work for me, invites Kellen. Kellen stands over here the other day. And, you know, whole Paul and a whole bunch of Nick and everybody winds up seeing him. He's, he's broken and winds up, you know, getting saved here. A couple Great Sundays ago. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And the other thing, the other part of that is Nate, Nate suffers from cystic fibrosis, if you don't know that. When I first hired Nate, he was just like in the shock, coughing, I mean, with the whole COVID thing and everything. This lady actually comes up and like, what, what's, you know, are you sick? Are you, you know, and it kind of embarrassed him a little bit, but since he's gone to work for us, he coughs less and less, and I can just see God healing him. <laughs> and he's noticed that I mean, I'm like, Nate, you don't even cough. Anymore. Like he first started, he's just like mad shape, but like every day he's there. And, and, and it's going to be good because the whole time I'm gone, he's going to be working. <laughs> he only works two days a week now, but he's going to be working the like, whole time. I'm gone. Thank you, Nate. Yeah. But, uh, that's quite a brand. Just check, too, just in that. The one thing I appreciate about you is just uh, the way, just the number of guys that you've had, you know, guys that have worked for you over the years that, you know, just as a young kind of entry level job that have gone on to become you know police officers and um i had this uh, occasion with jim and joe young and oh, yeah. joe you know worked for you and you know, it's like great to hunt with these guys because you know if there's something wrong with your bow you know they can it's like oh yeah you know, they can fix the stuff they're like you know you know <laughs> so, so we kind of been under the radar lord's really protected us there because even like the osha gal that showed up because we had like seven complaints and <laughs> And uh, got threatened to find fourteen thousand dollars and our door slammed shut and all this stuff. She shows up and well, she's a hunter I and mean, she's actually a fairly famous hunter, so she's kind of helping wolves off of us, you know. So continue to do great business and everything. But if you if you're on social media at all, um, you know there's a fellow named Nick Hammond. It's called Nick the Trainer Dude. And some of you guys see shaking heads, everybody knows Nick. Nick worked for me, and at the time, he was just a broken soul, but he had the most kind-hearted guy you ever want to meet. I mean, just one of the guys that can just, you know, touch souls in a big way, you know, but he didn't know Jesus, and, you know, I just was witnessing to him all the time, so I just knew God just had a purpose for him. And he was getting ready for a bodybuilding contest, doing steroids, smoking marijuana, because that's how you come off of it, so you can actually sleep and everything. And, working for me, being, making arrows, and I'd look in there, I'd see him, he'd just be crying, and I'm like, Nick, what, what's what's going on? He's like, this country music song, it's, it's just so sad, I can't take it. <laughs> that's what, that's what steroids do to you. I mean, that's exactly, you hear a country music song and you're bawling. You know? But it, that's how kind-hearted this guy is. And, and so he's getting ready for this show, and he's, this guy just shows up in the gym and starts, you know, training him. And Nick looks at him one day, and he goes, why Why are you here? You just moved here from Arizona. Why are you here? You know, he said, Nick said it was a day when he just hit rock bottom. He was just, 
He'd lost his first marriage and his kids were a mess and everything was just, he didn't have any finances. And so this guy looked at him and said, I'm here because God, God has a purpose for your life and, and I'm here because you need to get saved. <clears throat> and he prayed him through to salvation right then. And the next stop was the shop and Nick comes in and we're just slam busy and, and he's crying. And I feel like I had seen him cry before, right? And he's like, Wayne, I've got to talk to you. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Nick. <laughs> okay. I got to step out. You know, I only got 10 people lined up here to get my attention with all my guys going crazy. Nick, what's up? So I, mean, I just, I just got saved. I just, I'm like, oh my gosh, Nick. And so we're hugging and loving each other. And since then, I mean, he is on fire for God. A year ago, we had, we called him Shouted on the Mountain. We went up Pisgah and it was just a dynamic day. Nick gave his testimony and, and you know, I preached on you know, faith, and, and, you know, it was good, because it was a bunch of people that were, you know, never, you know, a bunch of, you know, workout people, which Joe is becoming a workout person, you know? <laughs> this, guy, this guy's great, he's bold, and so anyway, yeah, and so all these muscle people and everything, it was just awesome, awesome day on the mountain, you know, and we just had a great, great day to preach, and it was right after everything was shut down, and it was right when, like, you can't do anything, you know, so we just kind of threw it on social media, we had about 80 people show up, it was just, just awesome, you know, and I don't give anybody choices, you know, like, you know, when I do altar call, it's like your hands out, you know, and, you know, I just, you know, you're going to put everything that's bothering you in your hands, and then we're going to raise them, and we're going to receive Jesus right now, and so, it's just believe that, you know, 100% that, you know, Lord really touched those people, but, but anyway... I love. I, love I better this. let Joe be ask a question. Here. Well, I mean, I just I love this, one of the reasons I wanted you to share this story because um, we have the, the gifts of Christ. He gave some to be apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors, and you have this evangelistic anointing, this grace on your life that it's so good just to, to hear some of these stories because it just prompts us, and we get there is an impartation that's received for us to be like, yeah, like I'm not going to give people a choice. But what's like hold it in front of you and then raise your hands to God because you need Jesus. And it's like, you know, it's not like, you know, forcing people to stuff, but it's just, it's just creating that. It's the grace, it's the anointing that's on your life that invites people to a decision. It brings people to a decision. And, um, yeah, Wayne talks about, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 42 years old, going to be 43 in June. I climb trees for a living. And, you know, sometimes, um, you know, I won't, we won't, I won't climb for two weeks. We have a bucket truck, and we use that quite a bit. And all of a sudden, I'm climbing for three, four days. And then I'm sore for like a week. It's just, you know, I'm trying to work through it. And, and one of the things that, um, you know, Wayne, and kind of like the culture that's kind of around him and that he creates and with his you know, son, Nathan, they're just like these workout animals. You know, his wife, and they're just like, they're... They're kind of like next level crazy. And so you kind of like want to be friends with them, but you kind of don't want to because you don't like it's like crazy in that world. You end up like, you know, working out, running. Out. And I was asking, you know, just our, our, Wayne takes very seriously like our body being a temple under the Lord. And just like, you know, he's, he hasn't ate sugar for four years or whatever it is. You know, it's like, it, it's kind of crazy stuff like that. You're like, ah, you know, I don't like sugar. Uh, we can be friends. And I'm gonna like sugar. And uh, I was just asking like a week ago, I said, hey, you know, like, you know, Wayne, what do you do for working out? Like, what's some of your, your diet stuff? He's like, oh, yeah, I'd love to show you. And it, this is kind of typical Wayne. It's not like, hey, I'm gonna talk to you about it. I'm gonna say, he's like, yeah, just meet me at five at Planet Fitness. I'm like, I'm like five's like, I'm kind of busy at five. He's like, it's like 5 a.m. I'm like, and I acted like, yeah, like, totally. I said, I'm always up at four anyway. Like, <laughs> So this last week, I've been getting indoctrinated into Wayne, and uh, you know he's down there and his wife down there at five o'clock. And then the crazy thing is that that shocked me was there's all these other people that are winning in life waiting outside the doors for this place to open at five o'clock. I'm like, where do these people come from? <laughs> and you know they go in there and they work out for an hour. And I thought it was gonna be cool to work out for an hour, and you know, and then he's like, hey, uh, hop in my truck. We're, and then we'll I'll bring you back here. Where are we going? Like, well, we got to do cardio. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, there's like running machines here. No, 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 it's not good enough for Wayne. He's got to go park at the bottom of Mountain Gate and go like run up Potato Hill and back around. And <laughs> my lungs burned for two days. <laughs> so it's not like Peter, you know, he's been fishing all night. There's just no bites, you know, and Jesus shows up. And so I'm kind of like that with inviting people to work out. You know, it's like it's like fishing and there's just no bites. And then Joby's like, Hey, I'm interested. I'm like, oh, 
fish on. <laughs> it's more like sucker fish. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord. And we're just so thankful for your mercy and your love and your kindness to us, Lord. And that you've given us the gift that we can share. And you've given us the gift, Lord. Just such an unselfish, you know, that we can just be unselfish and we can, we can just take a step of faith, Lord. We can ask those people just to speak into their life and speak love and truth and, and just, just give what we have. Just, just take a minute and, and just really stop from all the voices that are in us, Lord, and, and just listen to you and just be obedient to you and share, share that hope that you've given us, Lord. You've given us all eternal life and, and, and just such an awesome, awesome Holy Spirit that can empower us and just give us, you know, the the power to just just work your ministry and, and, and watch your your ministry angels just just come and, and just touch those people and, and, and even if they don't pray through to faith right then Lord or they don't agree that that touches them Lord we know that just pray that you empower every one of us just to to be that person Lord and and especially to just just to send this church forth and just got great visions for growth and you've got so much love and power here when Lord, when you just touched Kellen the other day, and he just he just got so touched with the power of the Holy Spirit here, not saved, not anything, just walks in and just just crumbles. And and Lord, all your angels rejoiced when when you saved that young man, Lord. And just just thank you so much for your love and kindness to us, and just pray that you empower us. And we're going to ask it in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.